Hi there, this is Clinton Sanders from Seaside Extended. This is the second video in a series about building financial reports in Excel by connecting to Business Central financial data. In the first video, I spoke about connecting to financial data from multiple companies in one Excel workbook, and I, and I demonstrated how to do that using a web service page that we developed here at Seaside as part of an extension that we created called Se the Seaside Finance Pack. I was going to expand on that web service page in this video, but then after the last video was published, I got a very good question from one of my colleagues here at Seaside. And I thought that I would deal with that, that question um, in this video instead, and then talk about the web service page in the next one. The question my colleague asked was, well, actually it was two questions, but they were related. Um, and those questions were, the first one was, what would happen if you loaded 100 companies using, using OData? Wouldn't that take long? And then the second question was, how would you handle the limitation on the number of rows in Excel, just over a million rows? So in this video, I'd like to deal with those two questions for you. So let's have a look at the first question. What would happen if you loaded 100 companies using OData? Wouldn't that take long? The answer to this question will actually become clearer in the next video when I talk about our web service page and in which I'll also talk about the question of the Business Central web services that you will connect to um, for the purpose that you need to. But just to deal with it very briefly in this one, in this video, the issue is not so much the 100 companies, but more about the number of rows of data that you're attempting to load into Excel. Obviously, the more rows, the longer the query will take to refresh. Having said that though, Power Query is pretty efficient at processing fairly large queries with a large number of rows. The point I want to make uh, in this video very briefly, and then I'll expand on it more in the next one, is that the selection of the web service in Business Central that you will connect to is a very important decision. If you remember, the web services in Business Central um, can be accessed from the uh, web services page. Um, and in here, you can add web services that connect to any page or query inside of Business Central. So as we, as we may know, pages and queries process data and then it shows it back to us in a format that makes sense to us, most probably in a much more summarized format than the underlying data is actually stored in the database. Therein lies the answer to question number one. You need to find the page or query that you can publish into a web service from Business Central that gives you the data that you need in the format and detail that you need, it, that you need for the purpose that you're going to use it for. In the context of this question, we definitely do not want the page or query that gives us the most detail or more detail than we need. Okay, now for the second question. How do we handle the Excel limitation of a million rows? Well, you might remember in the first video, I said that there was, was more than one way to load the data from Business Central in the Excel workbook. And in that video, we loaded the data into an Excel table. The problem is, is if we do that, um, for a source that contains more than a million rows, we'll have a problem, right? So let's review that by opening up a blank Excel worksheet here. If I go into this worksheet and I press the end key and then down, it'll take me to the bottom of the blank uh, spreadsheet. And as you can see, the very last row number is 1,048,576 rows exactly. And I can push down, you can't add any more. So that would be a problem for us if we had a data source that contained more rows than that. So let me reveal the, the, the answer uh, to question two, and then I'll do a little demonstration. So the answer to question two is, if you don't need to see the raw data that you are loading, then load it into the Excel data model. Okay, so what is the Excel data model and how do we load data into it instead of an Excel table? The demonstration I'm going to do today is going to break the rule that we set when answering question number one because I'm going to connect to the general ledger entries page for 10 companies. That won't be a good idea in normal practice. Why, right? Um, because we, do, we would never need that amount of detail um, in order to build financial reports. Nevertheless, I wanted to do that for this demonstration because I want quite a lot of data to demonstrate the principle that I wanted to highlight here. Unfortunately, even my 10 companies does not have more than a million rows. And so I'm not going to prove to you that I can load more than a million rows into the Excel data model. You're going to have to take my word for that. I will tell you that, um, that I've loaded as much as 7 million rows into an Excel data model before, so it definitely works. I'm going to show you something very interesting, interesting though. 
So in my Kronos demonstration environments, I've extended my, my company copies to 10 companies um, so that I can get the amount of data that I want. The first thing I'm going to do is to connect to the data using the same method that I did in the first video and load it into an Excel table. So what I've done is I've got my base um, URL here up to the company point. I haven't specified the company because I want to connect more than, to more than one. And obviously I can't uh, specify the web service because I have to specify a company in order to do that. Okay, so we're going to click on OK here. And then we're going to get all of our web services by company. Okay, so I'm going to transform data because obviously I need to shape this data a bit more. So let's just move this back to the right screen. Right, um, so now I've got my little refresh indicator here. So the, the rule of that is whenever you see that, it's a good idea to always click on it um, because nav, uh, because um, Excel um, works with cached data. Um, Okay, the first thing I want to do is rename this field here to company. To company. And then I'm going to go to choose columns. And as I indicated, I wanted to connect to the general ledger entries page. I'm going to look for that web service over here. Uh, general ledger entries. Where are you? Where are you? There it is, GL entries. I'm going to go OK. I'm going to expand that. For my demonstration, I'm going to just leave all the fields selected. Okay, I wouldn't do that again in normal in the normal course of um, the process. Untick that option there so that I don't have the um, GL entries prefixing all my field names. I'm going to go OK. And then now, now this essentially is going to give me the GL entries for each of the 10 companies that I have. The same as I did before, I'm not going to go any further than this. I'm going to just accept this data as it is. Um, I can carry on shaping it, um, and we will look at that in future videos. But for now, I'm just going to go close and load, and that will perform the default function that I've got um, in, in my Excel setup here, which will be to load that data into an Excel table. So any second now, I think there's about 50,000 or 30,000 rows, yeah, if I remember correctly. Um, that will then, yeah, 28,000 rows, all loaded into an Excel um, uh, table. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File. I'm going to save this file. Um, I'll just stick it into my Downloads folder for now. And I'm going to call this um, GL Entries into Excel Table. Right, and then we'll park that there for the moment. Okay, so now the second thing I'm going to do is to perform that same um, load, but this time around we're going to load it into the Excel data model. So what I've done is I've, I've, pre I've just done the same steps um, that I did before in terms of getting up to the, uh, the fields that I want to select, because everything up until here is exactly the same for both methods. Where the difference comes in now is when you, when you want to load this into Excel. So You'll notice on this close and note button, there's a little down, a drop down arrow there. So if we click on on the drop down on the drop down arrow, we will basically get two options. We'll get a close and load. So just clicking on the button without accessing that little drop down button will perform the default function, which is the top one, close and load, which just goes into an Excel data table. What I want to do is select, select the second option, the close and load two. When I do that, I'll get this little window here. Okay, and you can see that the, the default is to load into a table. I don't want to do that. Okay, what I want to do is I want to change to this last option here, which says only create a connection. Okay, but that's not enough because only creating a connection means that it's going to set up a query that just has a connection to the data, but it won't actually run, it won't actually do anything when you refresh. Typically, we, we do those types of queries when we want to use that query for another query. Okay, that's something that we can show you in a future video as well. Um, but for now, what we, need, we need to do one additional step. We need to activate this option at the bottom here that says add this data to the data model. And that's essentially how you load the data into the data model. When I go OK now, you'll see that it'll perform the same, uh, it'll perform the same series of steps that run in the query. But you're going to notice that there's not going to be 
you're not going to get a table displayed here with the data inside it. Okay, the data is going to be sitting inside the Excel data model, um, which we can access using pivot tables or some specialized formulas that are available to us, um, which we're going to demonstrate in future videos as we start to build our financial reports. But as you can see here, we've got our 28,200 rows loaded. If you hover your mouse over the query, you can see the data preview here, and that, what the data that's sitting inside there. Um, but it's not sitting in an Excel table. It's perfectly out of the way. We don't have it in any of our Excel sheets. Okay, so I'm going to save this file. Uh, we'll put it into my downloads folder as well. And this time we're going to call it uh, GL entries in Excel data model. And we're going to save that. Okay, so here I've got my downloads folder and I've got the two files that I saved there. Now let's just compare the sizes, the size difference between the two files. So if you look at the, this was actually the first one we created, the one that we loaded it into the Excel table. You can see the size of that file is over three megs, almost four megs in fact. Okay, that's for 28,000 records. You can imagine that if there were a million records in there, how, how, how big that file would be. Um, but look at the one where we loaded the data into the data model and the size of that file. It's a lot smaller. It's sort of, at the moment, 20%. And as the data grows, that ratio actually reduces. So that's, that's one big benefit of loading data into the Excel data model is that the data gets compressed significantly when you put it inside there. Um, and that then results in a much smaller file size, which makes your, your financial reports that you're going to create using that data much easier to share via email or other methods. Um, the other benefit which, which, which comes from that as well is it exposes a whole bunch of um, formulas that we'll talk about in future videos that make that run much faster than the typical formulas you would use if you were, if you were leaving your data in Excel tables like VLOOKUPs and SUMIFs, which don't perform well um, with large data sets. Right, I hope that I've answered the two questions we had um, efficiently for you. Um, we'll leave it there for now for this video. Um, join me in the next video when we will talk about the uh, Seaside web service um, that we demonstrated in the first video. Till then, cheerio.